Hello everyone. Welcome to the webinar. We are so glad that you care for your friends so much that you have decided to join us today. Friends, they are not just there for social presence or even for a cup of coffee. They are there when you need them the most. You know, uh, fear, anxiety, pressure, you name a hard situation and you know that your friend will be there with you thick and thin. In fact, me and Akansha might have become friends recently. But I know that she will be there with me when I need her the most. Thank you. So, before I move ahead, I would like to say that at Calm Sage, we believe in spreading, uh, sp uh, spreading prosperity, happiness, and most importantly, a billion smiles every day. With that being said, let's just start our discussion on the topic, how to help a friend in despair. Hi, Kansha. Hi, Sarah. Before we take our webinar ahead, I would like to ask you that, are you feeling okay? Yes, I am. All right. So if there is anything you want to talk about, I am here. You okay. can say. Uh, actually, Akansha, I was a little distressed. Why? You see, this is my first webinar mm -hmm. and I'm facing the camera for the first time okay. and I was flipping out. All right. So I'll tell you that but, uh, but do one thing. So were the signs actually evident? Yes, actually. You you were looking a little more stressed. Your hands were shivering. I could notice them actually. Okay. But uh, so I would say that uh, just take a deep breath. <sighs> yes. And take this process as a tunnel and there is a light at the end of it. Okay. So this is just a process. Enjoy this process and let's take the webinar ahead. Sure. That, that's actually a cool piece of advice. Let me tell you. I was scared, mm -hmm. but now I am more than relieved. All right. Now, Kansha, uh, since you saw some signs of distress on my face, right? So, are there any significant signs, you know, uh, that tell you that your friend is distressed? Absolutely. Uh, so, Sarang, I would say that there could be some visible signs, mm -hmm. or there could be some invisible signs that tell you that uh, your friend might be distressed. Okay. So, uh, if I talk about the visible signs over here, your friend may look very sad. He may look very tearful. He is not as joyful as he used to be earlier. Plus, he might be having some kind of guilt for something. There could be any reason behind it, but it could be like evident on his face. Just like in mm. your case also, you were a little more stressed. I could notice it and that's why I asked you. Sure, right? sure. And uh, if you are talking to him, if uh, he's talking about future hopelessness or he's talking about worthlessness, has, has a lot of, uh, you know, fear and anxiety, things really get, uh, you know, evident over there. Mm. But when I talk about the invisible signs, uh, if you're good friends with that person, you can see that he is not enjoying those activities that you guys might be used to uh, enjoy together earlier. Sure. sure. Suppose uh, you guys were used to go for a basketball game earlier, but now he is not ready for those games. Or suppose he is acting very uh, differently. The way he uh, he used to uh, you know act earlier, he is not the way he is acting now. Sure. So yes, these are the signs that you have to uh, keep looking in your friend's uh, personality. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, Akansha, what do you suggest? How much time should a friend take to realize the situation? Uh, I wouldn't mark a box or I would say that mm -hmm. he, uh, he, you can take two days or you can take 20 days. Mm -hmm. This box is absolutely open and it also depends on person to person. Right? Sure, it depends sure. on the compatibility you have with that person. Okay. Right? So some people could be uh, showing those signs at earlier stages. Mm -hmm. Some people could show them later or some do not show at all. Right? Yeah, yeah. But if you are good friends with that person, mm -hmm. you might notice those signs. And the sooner you realize there are some signs, the sooner you have to act. If suppose you've realized that I am in uh, stress for like five, seven days already, it's better to ask me now. Okay. Yeah. Right, right, right. I get your point. So, uh, just as you said that, you know, you should not put that uh, thing in time frame. Yeah. I might, you know, give some days to, uh, to my friend to limber up and open up to me. Yeah, maybe. Uh, that would be a good and, idea. And there's exactly no time frame. No, absolutely. That, you know, it depends in between in your friendship, your sure. between two people. That depends. Yeah. Hmm. But uh, say for instance, he refuses to open up. Okay. He doesn't talk. Hmm. So uh, is that the time I should you know, strike up a conversation with him? 
so uh, you are talking about uh, the time frame uh, or you are talking about the worthlessness or you are talking about uh, if you are even worthy to yeah. take this action so if your question is revolving around this i would say that firstly every friend is a special person all right okay. and uh, but he needs somebody who uh, whom he wants to pour his heart out that person must be very calm very patient and uh, he should be wise with his words and the words should be as calming as possible only because then then only i'll be able to uh, you know take this thing ahead mm. and actually it's the perseverance that matters over here see if i am sure. stressed and if i can see that you are perseverant towards your act and you're every day coming and asking me same and same thing again maybe i'll be able to speak up to you in 4 5 days right sure. so your perseverance here matters your calm words matter your yeah. attitude matters so yes that's how the worthiness is decided for a friend actually so uh, trust being trustworthy is you know actually a very important quality for a Absolutely. for being there Absolutely. and uh, wisdom of course trust being being trustworthy with uh, you know with having a lot of wisdom in you yes. helps your friend to actually talk to you yes absolutely uh, would you like to elaborate on uh, these qualities a little more uh, uh okay i would say that uh, see no friend is an expert no friend is a you know no one expert but if the friend can act as a primary source of prevention sure sure this could be a really uh, great help for your friend yeah. so uh, if you are being patient if you are talking calmly to your friend you are actually becoming the primary source of prevention for them and your presence is something that is more comforting exactly so this comforting presence is what matters second thing i would say that if you ever were a wounded healer mm -hmm. or suppose you were there in his shoes earlier you have faced such instances earlier not even you not uh, even if it could be your uh, someone whom you know mm -hmm. he might have faced the same situation sure been there in those shoes so you know now then then you tell your friend that such and such thing has happened he might be able to trust you more not that i'm saying that such things should happen with you but mm. this reference can always help your friend to go ahead with your trust sure thing empathy mm. is, is very important absolutely, absolutely i mean if you are able to put yourself in your friend's shoes yeah he'll, he'll find it to be uh, he'll, he'll relate uh, you know you'll be able to relate your uh, his problems to you right right yeah so if you're talking about the word empathy over here let me also pick that up uh, sure. so as sarang said i would say that empathy is definitely important so what is empathy over here is that if uh, suppose my friend is showing the signs that he is in my shoes he was in my shoes earlier he can think about that i may have a connection with him in a better way mm. but rather if i'm telling him my problem and he's coming and saying oh who are you something has happened oh okay this is called as sympathy actually so mm -hmm. i do not want sympathy at that moment i would definitely not want that yeah you would hate it absolutely yeah. so it's the empathy that matters over here sure yes you know uh, just to gain a little more clarity on what you said uh, mm. i'd like to put forth an instance in front of you yeah say you know uh, i was in a relationship for so many years mm. and i'm guilty of breaking it uh, okay. that's just not me I'm but i'm judging you <laughs> yeah yeah that's just an example uh -huh. and you know i'm guilty of breaking that relationship mm. and that particular guilt has taken a toll on me mm -hmm. to an extent that you know uh, i'm not able to eat i'm not able to sleep mm -hmm. or do whatever all right and i'm completely stressed all right so uh, you know as a friend how would you approach me okay uh, so in this case if one thing is that i'll definitely look at the signs uh, that you have and now then when you are telling me that such and such problem has happened to you so i would do one thing i would not judge you for whatever you did because you had your own reasons for it so this is like really important thing i would really listen to you but i won't judge anything about you second thing that if you want to cry if you want to cry your heart out if you want to shed all the tears in front of me i wouldn't stop you okay yes i wouldn't stop you sure. because uh, crying you know helps in releasing all the pain and all the pressure inside your head so of course i won't stop but if the crying is of course for uncountable days the number of days are increasing i would mm -hmm. say that it's better 
to ask for an expert in that case but at, at in the primary source of prevention i wouldn't stop you for a moment and third thing i would say is that i wouldn't give you any kind of advice straight away if you have shared a problem it's well and good but any kind of advice straight away is not right see because if anything uh, you have done you have yeah. to fight with the same thing again otherwise if i i'll give you any kind of advice you might get confused with your thoughts and take any wrong action as well yeah. right so instead of or doing all of the things i would uh, rather ta- tell you that you're way more stronger than uh, than this situation than this point and you will be able to sort this thing and i will be doing it in a very very subtle manner in a very subtle manner without without uh, putting you in any kind of pressure right okay. so this will be my course of action okay hmm. uh, you know what i would rather do hmm. i mean uh, it might sound funny but you know i usually run after a friend okay that's <laughs> actually run after a friend to an extent that you know th- there are times when my friend gets angry hmm. and snaps back at me all right okay mm-hmm. so uh, that is uh, not such a right thing to do uh, mm-hmm. rather you can do one thing in that, that in that case if it, if this thing is happening then you can ask your friend maybe once or twice sure now if he's not replying you back just give him space for like one hour two hour but but tell him that you are two hour but once again so just tell him that okay you take your time but i'll be come back i'll be coming back in maybe half an hour in maybe one hour or maybe if you want to talk it out you can talk on phone mm. or maybe mm. write a letter to me or something like that the any way which he likes but just give him a little space for that moment while keeping him on radar while keeping a a good attention over him sure sure hmm so it's very very important just as you said hmm. that even though at that particular time frame hmm. your friend might not be in a position to talk to you yeah you should give him space but at the same time hmm. you should keep your friend uh, on the radar right. and make him uh, make him feel that you know uh, you you can talk to me a- at any point of time right that sounds good that you know uh, uh, there's this one instance that mm. you know once happened with me and i would like to share with you right. and uh, ask you if i did something right mm. so uh, what happened was uh, one day a friend of mine mm. he came back from office okay and he was apparently very angry all right he was in total rage okay you know to an extent that he was throwing things around okay i mean uh, that situation was uh, very difficult hmm. to deal with okay so i mean if if such kind of situations appear hmm. how do you intend to solve those okay so you were there when your friend did this can you tell me what did you do at that moment <sighs> that that was actually a very difficult situation let i would you. judge you for uh, your answer you just tell me that what did you do at that moment yeah. so the first thing i did was i sat him down mm-hmm. and waited for him to you know calm down because i i saw a visible amount of distress on his face he was hmm. he was violent he was not even ready to listen to his own parents all right so what i did was i sat him down hmm. and uh, i don't know if i did the right thing i offered him a glass of water okay. after you know he calmed down after 5 hmm. minutes mm-hmm. then i put my uh, one hand on his shoulder all right and you know after i figured out that you know things are a little under control hmm. i asked him to move out of house all right i so told him that you know i cannot let you stay in this environment you stay in this environment we'll have a chat okay and you changed his environment i did i did all because right. th- that that's the time i thought that this environment if i leave him here hmm. he's going to create havoc okay so i may want to add a few tips in this case hmm. suppose if your friend uh, in that case if he had said that no i don't want to come out hmm. so in that case you could have done one thing you could uh, have told them uh, you could have told him that uh, okay you can just go and sit in your room i hmm. am there i am sitting right here and we are going out in maybe half an hour or one hour till then you can take your time calm yourself down but i am here and i am not leaving from your house until you until you come back to me all right sure, but in your sure. case it was good that uh, he came out with you mm. uh, second thing i want to say is that your body language here matters a lot mm. just like you uh, sat in front of your friend you I kneeled do. down you uh, kept a hand on his shoulder mm. which is a really good gesture 
For example, if you want to come and talk to me uh, about something, and if I'm sitting like this, uh, I'm being very, you know, arrogant kind of, and I'm not even trying to look at you, I'm not listening, or I have, I'm sitting very cross-legged, not even paying attention to what you're doing, this will never work. All right. You know, possibly you won't even come across as an active listener. I won't even. I, I would not want to share anything with yes, you. Yes, absolutely. You know, your gestures saying. are saying that. Uh, your gestures are saying something else, and you are yeah. saying something else. Right. Exactly. Right. So body language is one thing, and third thing I would say is that do not force him to take any kind of certain action. Uh, for example, if your friend was uh, infuriated and he was standing mm. over there. Don't tell him to come and sit down, then we'll talk. Come and sit down, then we'll talk. Rather, we can go into this course of river and tell, uh, and even you like, you can stand over there and talk to him very nicely. And this is how your presence is going to matter in, in such a case. Sure. Hmm. That, that's actually very nice. Yes. That's actually a cool piece of advice. Right. So, audience, now it's your turn. We'd like to know that if you've helped a friend who was in distress hmm. and you've actually made, made some good efforts to you know help your friend come out of distress, the comment sections are open. Yes. And uh, guys, we would like to also say that if you've ever helped someone uh, in coming out of distress, then you can share your story on calmsage.com and share story yeah. section over the top. And it would be really nice. We would really like to know such stories. You can even go anonymous. We won't ask you to take names or anything, but we would really appreciate if you've done something like that for your friend ever. Sure. All right. So, uh, and you've got some good stories there. Yes, we have already got some good stories there. Please go and check them out. So, uh, there is one question now I am going to place for Sarang as well as for you. Are you guys ready? You are turning the tables now. Yes, absolutely. Okay. You have asked me a lot of questions already. So, this question is for all of you. So, we have also posted that question on our uh, Facebook live video. You can check that question and please answer it to us. Already, I'm ca I can see a lot of answers coming up, but still, I would like to read the question to you. Please sure. uh, let us know. So, Sarang, this question goes to you. Suppose mm. a friend is facing a lot of financial troubles mm. due to the job loss. Okay. All right. Okay. So, what would you go and tell him? So, yeah. you have three options. In option A, it's like... I'm sure you'll find it in some time. Mm -hmm. All right. Option B says that if I would have been in your shoes, mm -hmm. I had been having so much of financial troubles, I would have also been so much scared and frustrated. Mm -hmm. All right. And option C is like, uh, I wasn't this upset when I did not have a job. Let me think. Please take your time and let me know. No, what I'll, answer. I'll answer this from my heart because I have been in that position where, mm. where I did not have a job. Mm. I would go with option B. Okay. You know, uh, I would tell him that, you know, I, I can understand that thing that when you don't have a job, you're frustrated. Mm. And you are scared, you are angry, things, things actually happen to you. So I would go with option B. Alright, so uh, congratulations, you are an empathetic friend and guys, whoever has uh, answered us option B over here, Harshita, Ayushi, Alok, Mohammed Shabir, and congratulations to all of you, you guys are really uh, compassionate, but if anybody has selected option A or B, don't feel negative about it because you have now an opportunity to take yourself ahead and be a little more compassionate towards your friends. So yes, just be a little more compassionate and keep ahead, keep going. You see, we, we can see empathy is all around. Yes, absolutely. People are actually empathetic. Yes. No, uh, but Akansha, you know, it, it will be a little serious to ask. Mm -hmm. uh, this question was something that was on my mind. Okay. So, uh, say for instance, your friend is distressed to an extent that he's trying to hurt himself or herself. Mm -hmm. How would you deal with that situation? See, I'm glad that you have mm. asked this question, Sarang, because if anything like that is happening around you, just encourage your friend to mm. go and take help of an expert. Or if he's not going to an expert, you just help him uh, anyhow or uh, bring the expert to home or do anything, but don't take this any kind of uh, this situation in your own hand and bring an expert in between this. It would audience, be the best option. Take and heed of what, what Akansha is saying. Please. Please. Okay. So, there's this one last question that I would want to ask you. Hmm. You know, uh, sometimes what happens is after all your efforts, hmm. your friend finds it really hard to 
not trust you. Yeah. Uh, he feels that he's alone despite friends being around. Right. So, uh, how, what would you suggest to you know our friends who are who are distressed? Okay, so uh, to all of them, uh, we would say that uh, you can always talk to us at calmsage.com. We are here as your dearly friends. And uh, you can also share your views and uh, your questions by messaging us on uh, Instagram and on our Facebook page. And we will be uh, definitely replying you back. You can always go anonymous. We will keep your identity absolutely anonymous. And you can always count us in as your friend. And sure. you are like sure you will you should be sure of, of getting good replies back to you on this in the good time. We are empathetic and we will answer your questions. Absolutely. So you know, uh, just to summarize what I could understand uh, hmm. from your valuable points. Hmm. To help a friend in distress, the first thing is the intent. Hmm. If your friend knows that you know you care for them, that will show up. Right. The second thing is perseverance. No matter what, you should not leave them. Right. They might not be in a position to talk to you, maybe at that particular time frame, hmm. but you should not leave them. Right. And one great thing that you know you you mentioned uh, throughout this webinar is hmm. empathy. Right. Be empathetic. Show them that you know you care. You've been in that situation. Right. So uh, I I guess this was the crux. Uh, that you want the a point that you wanted to uh, put across exactly, to our audience exactly but before we uh, take it ahead we can also take a question that preeti has just asked us okay. and preeti is saying that a friend of mine is betrayed by his best friend and this has left him broken what should he do i i'm really sorry preeti that something like that happened with your friend but yeah. this doesn't mean that it it is the end of the world it's okay that someone has betrayed mm -hmm. That's okay. I know it takes a lot of time to gain that confidence back in some other person, but change is the only constant. Life goes on. Life keeps moving on. So it's better if he uh, or she, your friend, can uh, maybe uh, forget the same instance in some time, and maybe you as a friend can always give uh, him or her your shoulder, sure. and uh, things will of course get better really soon. Yeah. Just be there with your friend. And maybe Preeti should ask uh, her friend uh, to you know talk to people, make new friends. Absolutely, absolutely. That's how it goes on. And uh, th this thing is all about friends. We know that uh, you know if if, if uh, this person makes more mm. friends, yes, uh, he'll be able to feel better. Right. Okay. So uh, I guess that's it. That's it for the day. So before we sign off, uh, we have some really cool and motivating wallpapers for you. Yes. That you can possibly put on your desktop and mobile screens. Yes, and we'll be uploading them on our sure. Facebook page really soon. We okay. also have a Tell Your Friends series over here, which even I am going to do the right now. Please even do. I have a, a series over here, and I'm going to put it on my Instagram where while adding the story, I'll be doing hashtag Calm Sage in my story and telling my friend that you are as strong as. Like you're actually more strong than you are today. So just keep moving on, keep going on, and uh, we as a Calm Sage family is always there to take you uh, take up. And sure. uh, till then, we'll be seeing you again uh, on next uh, Wednesday. Stay tuned with us. Bye bye. Bye.